Hi, I'm Bob Sversel, and I'm going to be your ride leader for this virtual history ride around Tukwila. I hope you've learned a few interesting things from this video and want to explore further on your own. Tukwila is a city in Washington state just upriver from Seattle. It was incorporated as a city in 1908. Tukwila gets its name from the Chinook jargon word for hazelnut. Chinook jargon is a trade language that was used throughout the Pacific Northwest. Everything around Tukwila has completely changed over the past two centuries, including the population, environment, waterways, and more. We'll follow this route around Tukwila. You can view the route using a link in the description below. The route starts at the Tukwila Community Center. Leaving the community center parking lot, we'll head to the next stop. We're now riding on McAdam Road, named for Scottish engineer Don Loudon McAdam, who invented a new road building technique in the 19th century that involves laying specific sizes of rocks on top of each other. The rocks compact over time and strengthen the road. McAdam Road is the first road in the state of Washington to be built with this technique. At the beginning of the 20th century, this would be improved with a new road building technique called Tarbound McAdam, or as we know it, Tarmac. Next, we'll head on to South Center Boulevard to get to 42nd Avenue. This is Foster High School. Founded in 1915, it is Tukwila's only high school. It is one of the most diverse high schools in the United States, with students who were born in over 50 nations around the world. Notable alumni include artist William Cumming, politician Cal Anderson, community volunteer Betty Jean Gully, and battalion chief Don Tommaso. Our fourth stop is just over a block away. Tukwila Village is a six-acre mixed-use development that includes one of the largest affordable housing developments for seniors in the state of Washington. It includes a public library, community center, business incubator, and around 400 apartments, most of which are for seniors. This fulfills a 20-year vision by the city of Tukwila and a partnership with sustainable housing for the ageless generation. From Tukwila Village, we'll head on to Military Road along the city's western boundary. This is the Tukwila International Boulevard light rail station. When the Link light rail system was still being planned, there were multiple routes and station locations considered. The green line shows the route and station that were eventually chosen. On July 18, 2009, the Link light rail system officially opened, and Tukwila International Boulevard was the line's southern terminus. On weekdays, an average of 2,600 riders board the light rail from this station. It's a few miles before we get to the next stop, so enjoy the downhills along the way. We've arrived at the Duwamish Hill Preserve, a 10.5 acre parcel of land that has historical, cultural, and ecological significance. The hill was originally going to be demolished to make way for an industrial parking lot. In 2001, Forterra, the city of Tukwila, and Friends of the Hill formed a partnership, and in 2004, they were able to acquire the land. Through countless volunteer efforts, Natural habitats have been restored, and the Puget Sound Salish Cultural Garden was created to grow local plants that native peoples would gather throughout the year. Our next stop is a short block away across East Marginal Way.
You might not realize it at first glance, but the Duwamish River has been heavily polluted due to over a century of industrial activity. In 2001, the Environmental Protection Agency declared the lowest five miles of the Duwamish River to be a Superfund site. Cleanup efforts are expected to take a couple of decades, and there are health restrictions on the types of fish that can be eaten from the river. Duwamish Gardens Park is a public park that was created to restore the shallow habitat essential for young salmon to thrive in the transition zone between the freshwater of the Duwamish River and the saltwater of Puget Sound. It was officially dedicated in May 2017. Now we'll ride on the Green River Trail, a popular regional trail that follows the Duwamish River and the Green River from Tukwila into Kent. Look behind this bus stop to find a slightly hidden sign that marks our eighth stop on this history ride. You're standing at the former site of Foster Station on the Puget Sound Electric Railway. Operated by the Puget Sound Traction, Light, and Power Company, the Puget Sound Electric Railway ran between Seattle and Tacoma from September 1902 to December 1928. To power the trains, it used overhead wires in urban areas and an electrified third rail in rural areas. Our next stop is only a few hundred feet away. This tree was planted by Joseph Foster in July 1873 and is the oldest tree in Tukwila. It marks where Joseph Foster had his homestead. Joseph Foster was a pioneer born in Ontario, Canada in 1828, who moved to this area in 1853. He served in the Indian War, was in the Washington Territorial Legislature for 22 years, and helped establish the Foster School District, which is now the Tukwila School District. When the nearby golf course opened, it used the old Foster House as its clubhouse. Continue upriver on the Green River Trail. From this bridge, you can see the official start of the Duwamish River at the confluence of the Black and Green Rivers. The Duwamish River used to be a combination of the Black, Green, White, and Cedar Rivers, and thus had the nickname River of Many Colors, but so much about the river has changed. Let's zoom out and look at major events in the river's history. Near Auburn, the White River used to combine with the Green River. In 1906, a flood caused a large log and debris jam that diverted the White entirely into the Stuck River. A diversion wall was later built to make this permanent. The Black River used to flow from Lake Washington, and the Cedar River joined it as the Black River combined with the White River to form the Duwamish River. After a flood in 1912, the Cedar River was diverted to flow into Lake Washington. In 1916, when the Lake Washington Ship Canal in Seattle was completed, the water level of Lake Washington dropped by 9 feet and cut off the source of the Black River. The Black River then dried up as a result. Downriver, the Duwamish River used to flow into Elliott Bay, forming a wide area of shallow tidal flats. By 1920, it had been dredged and straightened to handle large shipping vessels. As you can now see, the river changed drastically just over a century ago. Just a hundred feet away is our next stop. This area is where the Duwamish village Skoalko once stood. Skoalko means confluence and had up to eight longhouses spread among all three sides of the confluence of the White and Black Rivers. The name Duwamish means people of the inside, and the Duwamish tribe has been living in the region for thousands of years. After the Treaty of Point Elliot in 1855, 
was signed by Duwamish Chief Seattle, for whom the city of Seattle is named, and many other tribal chiefs. Indians were forced to move to reservations like the current day Suquamish Reservation at Port Madison. In 1866, United States Indian agent Thomas Page recommended to the government that a reservation be established for the Duwamish along the Black River. But the idea was rejected after a petition containing 156 signatures from prominent white Seattle area residents was sent to Arthur Denny, the delegate to Congress from Washington Territory. Since then, the Duwamish tribe has struggled to gain federal recognition as a tribe. In 2008, they built the Duwamish Longhouse and Cultural Center along West Marginal Way in Seattle, where a previous Duwamish village had existed. Continue on the Green River Trail. On our way to the next stop, we'll ride on the Inner Urban Trail for a little bit. We've arrived at the Tukwila Urban Center Bridge. Completed in 2018, it spans the Green River and connects the Green River Trail with businesses along West Valley Highway. The bridge incorporates metal grates to cast less of a shadow on the river water below, providing a better habitat for the salmon in the river. It also features color-changing lights at night. We'll cross the bridge as we head to our next destination. The South Center area was mostly farmland that would experience flooding from the Green River in winter. In the 1950s, the Port of Seattle had plans to turn South Center into a massive industrial area but the city of Tukwila annexed the land before they could do so. In addition to construction of Interstates 5 and 405 nearby, South Center Mall was built. South Center Mall opened on July 31, 1968. It had 1.1 million square feet of retail space, 93 stores, and became the second largest mall in the country. After changing owners and multiple expansions, the mall officially changed its name to Westfield Shopping Town South Center, but it's still widely known as South Center Mall. Even though it opened back in 1968, South Center Mall is still the largest mall in the state of Washington. It has over 1.6 million square feet of retail floor space. We'll head back the way we came to get on the Green River Trail again. Just past the fire station is our next stop. This building is one of the oldest in Tukwila and is on the National Register of Historic Places. From 1920 to 1946, it was a schoolhouse, then City Hall until 1978. The building is now used by the Tukwila Historical Society. We have one final hill to climb, and the rest of the ride is mostly flat or downhill. In 1892, pioneers Joseph and Martha Foster donated land at this site to build a school. The Foster School opened in 1892 as a one-room schoolhouse. It was later moved when a larger four-room school was built in 1905. In 1922, a high school was built here that held classes until 1953. The concrete stairs from the old high school remain, connecting the upper former school area to the lower playfield. As we make our way back to the start, there is one more part of this history ride. In order to make sure you've been paying attention, we're going to have a pop quiz. You can pause the video if you need more time for each answer. Question 1. What does Duwamish mean? The correct answer is P. 
people of the inside. Question 2. Duwamish Gardens Park was created to help restore what animal's habitat on the Duwamish River? The correct answer is salmon. Question 3. What rivers combined to form the Duwamish River over a century ago? The correct answer is black, green, white, and cedar. If you answered all three questions correctly, good job! If you missed any answers, I think you're going to need to watch this video again. We finish our ride back at the Tukwila Community Center. I hope you enjoy this virtual history ride around Tukwila. I look forward to making more history ride videos and I hope you can join me for the next one. Thanks for watching.